Hey, man, what's Yo. up? Hey, how you doing, man? Dude, what have you got on the wall there? Oh, you know, my little collection, you know, bike stuff. So, remember that thing I told you about I found on Walmart? Oh, are you the kidding 100? me? No, this is it. It came, dude. It came. The little awesome. stingray? Oh, my yeah, gosh. 125 bucks. Look at this thing. Holy crap. That's amazing, dude. I assembled it over Christmas week. It is so fun to ride. I mean, everything looks the same. Like the banana seed, everything looks the same. Yeah, geometry is 100%. Um, they went a little cheap on a few things, but they upgraded some other stuff too. Dude. So now you got now you got two of them. Yeah, yeah. So now I've got the uh, my son's old Stingray Jr. down here. Then it needs some help. It needs some TLC and some parts. And I was thinking to myself, after riding it and playing with it, I'm like, it's cool. Um, it's not a modern bike, but... Wouldn't it be cool if, like, I could maybe use both bikes and get this one running again to keep it in the family? From 1963 till 1981, Schwinn sold more Stingrays than any other bike made in America. These were the coolest bikes to be found, and everybody knew it. Even today, seeing a vintage Stingray brings up a nostalgia that's hard to beat. So what's not working on the old bike? What's broken? Okay, the wheels are just hammered. So after I trued them and repacked bearings, the spokes have gotten worse. So they're super spaghetti. Bottom back, it's, it's bad. So it just rides rough. Geometry is great though. It's a fun little bike. So you're thinking maybe switching parts from the new bike to yeah, the old yeah. bike. I thought it was so cheap. What if I was to maybe swap the wheels over? It looks like for the most part, I could swap a lot of things over you know what you could do the really high-end ones the orange crates had drum brakes on them what yeah, if we built you up that. a sick wheel set with the drum brakes maybe even like a three-speed rear maybe even swap out the crank set and then bring all your new stuff over to the old one wouldn't it be cool if we did you know still bottom racket with say 155 maybe 160 length arms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't hurt so much to pedal and you'd have maybe shifting dude that'd be so cool man that would be like the <laughs> coolest looking cruiser ever Dude, Sturmy Archer, man. I'm on their website right now. They have got some cool stuff. The classic stuff we used to see in the bike shops is still all there. They've got stuff for free hubs, for cassettes. And then down here, they've got this three-speed, 70-millimeter drum brake rear hub. This thing oh, yeah. is so, so it cool. it wouldn't be too big. It'd still fit inside that. Yeah, so. yeah. So right. spacing would still work. So did you already check the hubs and see what your... Uh, I did, yeah. So the spacing is almost the same. So uh, in this frame here, I'm getting 110, but it usually goes to about 113, 115 in the rear. Okay. Well, this is gonna work. I'm just checking out the specs right now. So you can upgrade basically to a three-speed. You can keep the same cotton if you want to, but you'll hold either a 13 tooth, correct to a 24. So it's got some decent rims. You're talking like box components. Uh, run some 14 gauge stainless steel spokes, whatever you want. I want to help you with this. This would be really cool to do, man. Really cool. I think so too. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds cool. good, man. Dude, Rusty. What's up, man? How's it going, man? Good, good. It's parts day. Parts have arrived. Oh, yeah. Let's check it out. All right. So here's the crank set from Bob. Okay. This is the Truvative um, uh, Euro to okay. American. And there's the square taper. There's the box branded uh, bottom bracket. Here is the front hub. With the drum. Oh, man. Look at the flange size on that thing. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> this thing's so big. This is the XRD3. So actually, you know what? I got free shipping on, on all this stuff from Box. It's pretty cool. Dude. So nice. there's the rim. It's got the double eyelet there. There's their super cool little logo on the inside. So you bought a $125 bike and you're gonna put about 400 bucks of parts on it. If you think about it like this, <laughs> this, this yellow, <laughs> this yellow uh, Stingray Junior cost $87 in 1977, right? So in 1977, $86 today is worth about 570 bucks. Holy crap. So, <laughs> that makes sense, maybe. <laughs> That's so cool, man. All right. It'll be a cool project, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see the wheels getting built. Uh, we should film it, man. That'd be cool. That'd be, be really cool. Yep. I'll keep involved. So thanks for all your help on the project. All right. See you, man.
So I've got the wheel in place here and the crank is on. Chain line looks terrific. It's running really good so far. So steel bottom brackets in place. A couple little tweaks here I had to do to basically make sure that that um, sprocket would line up properly. But you can see right here that it does. Looks really good. All right, so the chain guard has been primed and painted and sanded, but I'm not really happy with this color, the way it turned out. So I'm gonna go a little bit brighter. And I've got a bit of an orange yellow color here I'm gonna go with. And what I've learned here is that with the cheap paint, you really just can't rattle the can and go for it. You really need to warm the can up. So what I'm gonna do here using some science is warm this thing up. You can get this thing up to 120 degrees and let it sit there for maybe say 10 minutes at 120 or hotter. What you'll find is that the paint seems to go much smoother out of the can and you get less of the splattering. So let's give that a try. Okay, doing the color change. One of the things to not do is to be in a hurry to try to get the whole thing covered. So do little light patterns, let it dry, come back in two minutes and do it again.
Hey, man, what's up? Hey, hey, the project is done. The bikes are done. What you want ready to see? Let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah. Let's see it. Okay, here we go. All right. There she is. Beautiful. I was able to clean up the rear seat a little bit there, but it's all original like the uh, like rest of the bike, except the tires and wheels now. Wow. And then here's the new bike, man. So <laughs> here's the kind of the comparison of decals, a little bit different places, uh -huh. but there's the new wheel set you helped me with. Dude, those look so tough, man. It's like... <laughs> It's like a steamroller. They're pretty. Uh, they're pretty good for it. My son's been off the curb with this bike a few times now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if I keep telling him this, it's my bike, not his. But. Wow. <laughs> there's so the box there's cranks. Box cranks. They look so good. And, um, I try to get the the cable routing nice and smooth here along the bottom, but uh, all in all, it turned out pretty good, man. Man, love it, love it. Let me see the paint job one more time on the yellow bike. Okay, so. Here we are again. Dude, that looks every bit as glossy and good as the green one. Nice oh, job. <laughs> How much time did you have That's in that? Oh, I think 15 hours or so in the painting. Wow. I spent time sanding and painting for three weekends, I think. Dude. But I think it was worth it, it was fun. Awesome, man. Well, congrats, that looks so it. good. Looks so good. Oh, thanks, thanks for all your help. This has been a lot of fun, so. Cool, man. We'll cool. have to ride these. Yeah, yeah. It's next time. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, well, that was fun. I'll talk to you later, okay?